You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Scott Hambrick, and we have Matt Reynolds, as always. And today we are going to talk about time saving tips. Yeah, we're a big fan of tips. Certainly, I've had times in the gym where, especially if I'm in a good gym atmosphere with other people, workouts can turn into three hour workouts pretty quick because you're talking and having fun, listening to music, whatever. So, this is really an episode for people who are maybe trying to train on their lunch hour. They're really, absolutely, truly busy, like their life is just packed and they're trying to get it in as quick as they can and and how to maximize that efficiency in the gym, I think is an important episode to talk about. Yeah, we get these people contact us all the time and <laughs> or our online coaching clients and, and they're taking these three-hour workouts. Let's start with this. How long should a workout take for someone who's an LP, Uncle Matt? Yeah, I think never over an hour. Oh, Okay, let's say at the very end of LP, if you're, you know, somebody who's strong enough that you're squatting like 350 and you're, mm -hmm. you're deadlifting over 400 pounds and you need a few more warm-ups, that's fine. I still think 90 minutes is like, if you're oh. in LP and it takes longer than 90 minutes, you're doing something wrong. I think your first sessions are 45 minutes and your last sessions are an hour 15, I think, in LP. Yep, that's exactly what I see. Same thing. 40, 45 minutes to start, hour and 15 at the end. And that really just is because you need a little more rest when the weight gets real heavy and you might need a few more warm-ups when the weight gets heavy. So when people tend to wait too long in between their squat sets in the end of LP, and you know, that three to five minutes is plenty, but here's the thing, you can use that time to do something else. You do your squat warm-ups and you load up the bar for your final work set you can start warming up the other things. You can start warming up your bench press or your press. If you're a home gym person, you need to get an extra barbell probably. This is why the bigger squat racks are great. Yeah. Like the Rogue 4 series, the R4, the, what is it, RML4. Yeah, it just means it's basically four feet between yep. uprights, right? I think that's what that means. The three is three feet between. I mean, that's kind of the general idea. So if you've got that, you can squat inside and then press on the outside of that rack so you can get two things going at once. And you can cut 15 or 20 minutes off your workout if you start warming up your next movement when you get to the work sets of the current one. That's right. That's a big deal. And it doesn't hurt you. You know, pressing the bar for your first warm-up set is not going to wreck your squats, you know? Correct. That's exactly right. Yep. Yeah, so... I coach Nikki Sims. I've coached her for a while now and her life is busy and she's having some fun doing like Brazilian jiu-jitsu on her off days and stuff. And so she's just like, man, I really can only train three days a week. And so as advanced as she is, she has to do a fair amount of work, more work than normal oh, yeah. for three days a week. We've talked about this. If I can get my clients to go to four days a week in an upper lower split, it's so much easier to keep your workout time shorter. And for somebody like her, who's a very advanced female lifter, who can only train three times a week, she has really learned how to, how to train efficiently on that three times a week. So she'll alternate her lifts, right? So she'll warm up one while she's finishing up the other. She will, um, especially for warm up, she moves through those really quick. And she's just figured out how to get in there and bust her butt and uh, get in and out in 90 minutes or so, two hours maximum. And that's for a super advanced lifter doing, basically she does four main lifts every single workout. Yeah. And so she's getting through those in under two hours and often, you know, even probably closer to an hour than two. Yes. So part of that tip there is you might need the bigger rack. Yep. And you're going to need two barbells. Yeah. Which you should have two barbells anyway, right? Right. At least you should have a minimum of two barbells. How many barbells do you own? Twelve. Yep. That's about the <laughs> 15, same. Fifteen. <laughs> I don't know. Need some more, by the way. Of course you do. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I need to get a Texas power bar. I don't have one. Man, I passed up on some of those York split sleeves the other day, and it just pissed me off no. now for a week. Man. So this guy, I know, listen, this guy was selling two York split sleeves and a bunch of the York milled plates for $800 cash. And Patrick Yeomans reached out to me and said, hey, are you interested in these? I said, yes, yes, yes. Tell him I'm interested, right? And then I haggled with the guy to try to pay a little less and somebody else came in and paid him the $800 out from under me quick, and I lost it. And I would have paid the $800 for it. I was just trying to save myself Matt you know, Reynolds. $100, 150 bucks. I know, stupid. I feel bad. When, when you first got started, 
with the home gym charity and i had a rogue r3 rack and we were both training together and you can't have two people squat well charity the height discrepancy is a foot between us sure you know squatting out of the same hooks is not a great idea and so no nope. man it took us a lot of time to both work together with that rack and we got rid of that we got the r4 cut yeah 40 minutes out of our workouts and then you multiply that times three or four times a week that's a big deal yep. so if you know if you had a training partner you know having that bigger rack is a big deal and even if you don't have a training partner you can cut some time off of your sessions as well yeah because you can do two lifts at the same time you guys you know we've got the whatever it is rml6 which is the four with the extra third upright with the weight storage on the back side you know, rachel and i can both squat she squats inside the rack i squat outside the rack and then somebody can deadlift inside the rack and somebody can deadlift outside the rack. She can press inside the rack. She's short enough. I press outside the rack. And so we're able to work through that together. And then we've got our platform is about 12 feet long instead of eight so that we have the space to do it. Right. So right. the only way to use the R3 racks correctly where you can really use them as efficiently is to put them in the middle of the platform. Right. So that both people can squat outside the rack facing each other and then they could theoretically deadlift outside as well. You could do that. I don't think people utilize that enough. I remember mm -hmm. Paul Horner was one of the first guys I saw that figured out how to do that in his original room um, at Horn Strength. And see, he had those racks set up in the middle of the room so that essentially there were like two squat racks. So somebody could squat yep. on one side and somebody could squat on the other side, but both squatted outside the racks. And then he just got the catch pins that attached to the outside of the racks. That worked pretty well. So I love, you need a timer. So I was going to say, I've actually got them pulled up on my Amazon. So it's another thing that I think Horn has on every single rack at Horn Strength is a digital magnetic timer. So it just actually like stick it on the upright up at about mm -hmm. seven feet high, six and a half feet high above your head. And you've got your rest periods set. And so, you know, we've talked about this before for your warm ups. You don't really need to rest much at all. You rack the bar, you add your more weight, you put the clips on and you get back under the bar and squat again. Like you just don't like 60 seconds rest for most of your warmups is perfectly fine. And then once you get to the point where you're doing your work sets, that will start at about three minutes rest for your work sets. And as you progress through LP, you'll go to three and a half and then four and four and a half and maybe five. But I just, you know, if efficiency matters to you, I just don't see a real need to rest longer than five minutes between work sets. And you get really, really strong and like you're going to deadlift, say 650, and your last deadlift is 585. 585 is pretty damn heavy. And then you might need six or seven minutes, but I don't ever think you need 12. No. You know, I mean, that's just too much. And I think you can adapt to that shorter rest period as well. Now, certainly you can get to a point where the rest is not enough, but that timer makes a big difference. And it needs to be the magnetic one, not the one on your phone. Correct. Because you don't want to pick up your phone because your phone is a life trap that will steal your life from you. That's right. Yep. We have a... Uh, I don't know, gym timer, CrossFit timer thing hanging up on the wall. Yep. And it has a little phone app. I just said the phone, but I can go in there and I can say, give me a tone. A minute later, give me another tone. And then three minutes later, give me another one. So correct. It beeps. You have a minute to do your set. It beeps yep. again. Then you have a three minute rest. And I'll just set it to do that for an hour and a half. And then typically it's me, Charity, and my father in law, Todd, that are training together. And we all just get in there and we work from the timer yep. and it just goes. Yeah, it's amazing how much faster it goes. You know, when I had to get good at this, by the way, is, you know, at this point, because we primarily coach online and because most of our clients are not paying us by the hour, I had to learn how to do this well when I was coaching people at Strong and they paid for an hour a time. Right. And I often would have back to back to back to back, you know, seven, eight clients in a row. I would sometimes tell those clients as they got stronger, like, hey, come in. 15, 20 minutes early and start your warm ups while I'm finishing up with the previous client so that you're getting close to your first right. work sets by the time I'm ready. But we would do the same thing. So we had those gym timers in all of the main rooms at Strong and they would just constantly beep. And I'd usually set them at like every two minutes so that every two minutes they beeped. And so for warm ups, every time it beeped, they had to make sure they hit another warm up like every two minutes. And mm -hmm. then when they got to their work sets, they might be able to go an extra beep. So like four right. minutes or whatever. I just and I just set it so that it would just run like that all day and would work great. Yeah, ours goes one, one minute, then three. Yeah, I like that better. So a strong guy can skip a one minute and a three. And so he has a four minute rest, or he can do an eight minute rest. Sure. Yeah. Well, actually you can do a one, a three, a four, yeah, right, a seven, or an eight. Sure. And it works pretty good. And when we lift by the clock, we say we do a whole lot better out there. 
Those gym timers aren't cheap, man. Not the big ones. Yeah. It's worth it, though. Yeah. So I think the nice Rogue one's like 300 bucks. And then the, I don't know if it's Muscle Driver. Or there's another one that's about 150, 179, somewhere in that ballpark. But you're not going to find one cheaper than that. Let's see what mine is. It's none of those. Let me see here. They're not cheap. Flex timer for my gym next. But the digital timers on Amazon, the one that we use a lot of times, I think it's called the main one that I have with my clients. It's like the elegant digital kitchen timer, stainless steel, ET23. It's $12.95. <laughs> Magnetic back, right? So yeah. if you're cheap and you need to be efficient with time, that probably works just fine. Yeah. What's your time worth? You know, that extra barbell, the bigger squat rack, I mean, and a timer, you know, you might have an additional $800 in those things, which is a lot of money. That's right. But you're going to have them for years. They could save you an hour and a half to two hours a week. That's right. For years. It doesn't matter how unskilled labor you are. No matter what hourly rate you make, that's going to pay for itself pretty quick. Right. Or like even if you work for $10 an hour, it ain't going to take long to make sure that that's worth your time. So it's definitely worth it. So our first thing that we do is we make sure that our rest period is relatively short. We can make sure that we can quantify that with kitchen timers, with digital timers, or, you know, spend some money, put the nice gym timer up on the wall. And then we, like you mentioned, we will start warming up the next lift as we're finishing up the first lift or warming up the third lift as we're finishing up the second lift. Those are all three really good strategies. What if someone, we get this some, somebody is a young parent of a small child and the only time that they are free to really train is on their lunch hour. So they're lunch hour people. So they have an hour from the time they can take their break, change their clothes, get in the gym and train. So, I mean, the first thing is, if that's the case, the gym has to be super close or in the building, right? Like you can't right. drive 15 minutes to the gym, change your clothes, train in 25 minutes, change your clothes again and drive back to, that's just not going to work. But if the business you work in has a gym and or very, very close, and you have an hour so that you basically have maybe 50 minutes, five, zero minutes to train, what do you do then? What you can do? Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say the first thing I would do is a four-day split. I'd go to four-day well, split or maybe even a five-day split, right? So the first thing that we can do is in that LP, novice yeah. linear progression sort of programming and HLM, Texas method, that kind of stuff, you're doing full-body workouts as soon as we switch to the four-day split, you're going from three main lifts a day to two main lifts a day. You're just doing more days. And I think that's the first thing I would do. And then if you're really hurting for time, you've experimented with this, you can go to your one-day lift a day program where you get in and you hammer one lift real hard and you get out. Yeah, I had a guy uh, this morning on Instagram. I asked for some cues for the Q part of the Q&A. And he said, I'm going to go back through LP after a long layoff. I would like to do a four-day schedule. Thoughts on how to split up. And I was like, why do you want to do that? And he said, because of time. I'm like, that's the only good reason to do it in a LP. Sure. So let's just go over that real quick. But basically, in the four-day split, you're going to have one primary lift each day. On the four-day split, you would have two upper body days and two lower body days. Yes. And you're going to lead with, it's going to alternate. Right. So the first, so you're going to do bench first, and then you're going to follow it up with a press. And right. And on the other upper body day, you're going to start with press and follow it up with bench. Right. Same for squat and deadlift. You have a squat primary and then deadlift after, and then the other day is deadlift first and then squat. So you just do LP there. Now, you're going to find that on your bench press day, your bench press is going to go well, but then you're going to be tired and your press is going to suffer. And then on the, you know, two workouts later, you're going to press first and then bench press. And because those two lifts use so many of the same muscles, your second lift of the day is going to suffer. I still think it's a good way. The squat and the deadlift don't seem to affect each other as much as those two presses do when you do them in the four-day split. So sure. you'll find that that second pressing motion is darn tough. So just know that that's going to happen. Be patient with yourself when you do that. But you're going to get in the gym, do two lifts, and get out. If you overlap the warm-ups for your second lift with the working sets of your first lift, let's just do a little math here. You do five warm-ups. Let's say they take you a minute and a half each. That's going to be seven minutes to warm up your squat. You have three work sets. They're going to take you a minute each. That's three more minutes. So now we're at 10 and a half minutes. You're going to wait five minutes between each. That's 15. And that's aggressive. You're being aggressive there. But yeah. We're flying. Yeah. I think a five-minute rest period. You're talking about a full five-minute rest yeah. period between yeah. work. The baby's asleep. Sure. <laughs> so we're at 25 and a half minutes. But in that 15 minutes plus the three minutes that it takes to actually do the squat, that's 18 minutes. 
you can just damn near finish your deadlifts. So you're talking about doing a four day split in LP and getting done in 25 to 30 minutes, probably. Yeah. Yeah. It can be done quick. And by the way, if I do that, I almost always just lead the lower body day with squats and I almost always lead the upper body day with presses because I think squats a little more important than deadlift. And I think press is a little more important than bench press. Right. And when I get to an actual four day split, like non LP, then I always just lead with the intensity day, intensity exercise, and then follow it up with the volume exercise. Sure. So it's like a one set of five or whatever, and then a five set of five. So, and we're doing the four day split here in LP, not for recovery, not to facilitate recovery, but because we have time constraints. Correct. So there really wouldn't be anything wrong with saying, I'm going to squat and then press next session. I'm going to deadlift, then bench. Correct. So there wouldn't be anything wrong with uh, mixing the upper lower kind of stuff in this situation, but it's still LP. You're going to put weight on the bar every time and you're going to do, and you need to squat at least twice a week. I mean, so you can get in and get out with that. Yep. I would agree. Ain't a bad idea. Even if the baby ain't asleep and you've got time, still not a bad idea. No. You know? Yeah, I mean, at some point, you've got to ask yourself those three questions that we talk about all the time about recovery. But for most of your training, that's not the case. So certainly there might be some point in your training where you go like, okay, now I actually have to make a decision. Am I resting long enough between sets? Am I giving myself enough time to recover? Those are right questions to ask if you're not hitting your weight. But as long as you're hitting your weight, man, just get in there and get out. It doesn't matter. Go, go, go. Right. It works pretty well. You know, I've also then used, as you become moved down the advancement scale spectrum with clients who are dealing with people like Nikki Sims, people like Brett McKay, who are very busy and more advanced. I'll put them on a four day split type thing and they'll work their first exercise good and hard, three sets of five. Maybe it's a top set and some back off sets. It's your standard kind of way. And then as soon as they get to their second exercise, or even if they have three exercises that day, I might do an EMOM or an every, so an EMOM is every minute on the minute or every 90 seconds or every two minutes. Mm -hmm. And what they might do is go, so I actually like 90 seconds better. So like 90 seconds. And so maybe they're going to do a bench press in a row. So they're going to start with the press. They're going to do their normal press. And then their next two exercises are a bench press and a row. So they're going to bench press a triple 90 seconds later, they're going to barbell row five, right? Next 90 seconds, they're going to bench press a triple barbell row five and they're just going to keep alternating back and forth uh, so well here's the crazy thing you do that for like seven rounds so you get both of them in so seven times 90 seconds right so that's what is that 11 minutes and somewhere in that ballpark yep 10 and a half minutes yep so yeah, i mean it's really really fast you get in and out so you've been having me do uh eight doubles or eight triples or something like yep. that F that <laughs> just because you hate it all those sets it's just I just hate it. You're just putting your belt on. You're just, you know, yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Matt. Yeah, but the question is, would you rather do eight sets of three or three sets of eight? Same weight? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, you can't do the same weight. That's the other problem. Right. Right? Like, you can't do. So, you actually get more tonnage on the eight sets of three because the weight is almost always heavy. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. But I just eight sets. When I'm dealing with somebody who's really trying to lose weight, like they're actually like, hey, I'm going on vacation and they're pulling the whole like, hey, I've like really this is important for me for the next two months or whatever. I've got a couple of clients like that right now. I'll actually alternate those two options. Mm -hmm. So where the intensity movement is like eight sets of three, seven sets of three, six sets of three, eight sets of two, somewhere in there. And their volume is like three sets of eight. Knock it out, get a bunch of volume in quick. You don't have to do five sets on that day. And the eight sets of three, eight sets of two, whatever that is, that's on short rest. That's an EMOM right. or every 90 seconds, somewhere in there. And they get in, they get out, they get a lot of work in in a short period of time. You know, we don't talk about or don't think about too often sort of density of training, like how much work I get done in an actual period of time. And I think as long as time doesn't super matter where you're not one of those people like we're talking about in this episode, it's like, God, I gotta get this done in 45 minutes. I don't think it's really super valuable to think about. but for people who are trying to lose weight and time management is really important, the amount of work I can get in in an hour, 45 minutes or 55 minutes or however much time I have, if I can get in more work in the same period of time, like that's what I want. That's valuable to me. I think something that's super important as far as time savings is the home gym. Oh, it's huge. Commute time is so bad. Charity and I trained at a public gym for, I don't know how long, many months. And you can just almost, even in Tulsa here where commute times aren't bad at all, you can just darn near complete 
even in Tulsa, an LP workout in the to and fro time. Yeah, of course. In the commute time. Yeah, the longer we do this, the more we are fans of home gyms. And that's not to say if you live in a town that's got just a great lifter's gym, it's got great atmosphere, there's definite advantages to that. You bet. For sure. But most of our listeners don't. And so the vast majority of people that we have for online coaching are either training at their house or they're training at a big box gym. Yeah. And those big box gyms, it's interesting to kind of watch that client. Usually six months in, that client's like, I got to build my own gym. I'm tired of this. Yeah. And they do. And it's worth it. Again, it's because for time, people are doing the math wrong when they're just trying to add up. Well, you know, like maybe I'm just paying $29 a month at the big box gym. That takes a long time to pay for in equipment, but that's not what it is. It's time. Yeah. It's what's your time worth. All right. So how much does it cost to build your home gym? You know, 2,500 bucks. Do it right on Craigslist. You can probably do it for under a thousand. Some of you guys get lucky and get it for under a thousand bucks, but you know, you can have a real nice home gym for $2,500. Very nice. And for $2,500, I mean, again, how long does that take to make $2,500 for your time? Yeah. Everybody's too darn busy. You know, McKay and I were talking about this a little while ago, you know, in the seventies, it was about like leisure suits. Like people thought that we were just going to have more and more leisure time yeah. and that society would be changing, you know, and, you know, we'd be driving a hover car and wearing our leisure suit and eating fondue. All this time. And people have only gotten busier yeah. and people have less free time now than they did in the fifties. And it's tyrannical. It's weird, isn't it? I'm mad about it. And I could do. Why do you us. think we filled like, because obviously like modern technology has made, all of those things that used to be difficult, far easier. You know, let's take some simple ones like laundry. How long does it take to do your laundry? Well, like how much actual work? It literally is 10 seconds to drop the clothes into my washer and drop a Tide Pod in and hit start. Yeah, but we had laundry machines in the 50s. You know, we haven't picked up anything since then. How about air travel? We've had jet sure. travel since the 60s. Okay. But you used to be able to just like walk onto the airplane. Um. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Right. So how long does it take to I can drive to Dallas right faster than I can get in my car now, go to the airport, get on the plane, go to it's ridiculous. But Springfield, Missouri, I've got to go early, get on the airplane, and then fly to Dallas and then have a layover and then fly from Dallas to Wichita Falls. And that flight is canceled or delayed all the time. Right. Then I've got to rent a car. I gotta to get to like nope, not worth it. Right. So it takes, yeah, way, 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 way too long. The phones don't save us time. They consume our time. Asynchronous television hasn't saved us time. Like it used to be, if you wanted MASH, you had to sit your ass down at 7 p.m. and turn on, what was it, CBS or whatever, sure. on whatever day that was, and watch a 30-minute episode of MASH. But here's the good deal. If you missed it, it was gone, right? But now people, I, I don't know, they're going to sit down and binge watch it because they can't miss any of it. Right. You know, so like everything has just become more demanding. And then you look at like stagnant wages and the fact that, you know, people actually make less per hour yep. than they did, you know, 30 years ago. You realize that, you know, housing costs have increased, but wages haven't. And people just have to work more to have the same kind of stuff that they had right. in years past. And it makes it hard for us to take care of our physical being. Yep. You know, if you have to sit in a cubicle for 10 hours a day so that you don't get thrown out of your home. It's crazy. It's bad. Well, so even then the things that we do in our life that really bring us value, like training, can still be done in an efficient manner. Yeah. And even if it's one of those issues, I think we would both argue that even if you're not one of those people that has to get your entire training done in, on a lunch break, training with some economy, with some efficiency yeah. is valuable. Now, that doesn't mean that, like, there are times for us, for Rachel and I, or we have people over the house. Matt Reynolds, I'm still mad. Like, kids used to play <laughs> sports but they would go to like the vacant lot yeah. and do it. Now the parents have to drive them to a dedicated space and sit there and watch their kid. And pay tremendous amounts of money to do it. You know how expensive it is for like club volleyball, club soccer? Oh. But like it's crazy. So that what? Like I don't understand. Our kids go to gymnastics. Like our rule has always been you get one thing. Right. Pick the thing. We're never going to be the parents to take our kids to nine different things. All Like I watch. We have friends that do that. Like, you know, I'd say, hey, I ain't judging, but yeah, I'm actually judging. Yeah. It's crazy, right? So they go to gymnastics and, you know, we sit there and watch them at gymnastics. And No, we don't. We don't watch them at gymnastics. We take them to gymnastics. We drop them off and then we go drink margaritas. And then we go back and pick them up. We don't drink too many margaritas before right. we go back and pick them up. We go have a margarita and a taco 
and we have a little one hour date while my kids are at gymnastics. By the way, we found a place that my 14 year old is pretty damn good at gymnastics. I'm not one of those parents that wants to ever live vicariously through my kid, nor do I care at all if she's ever good at gymnastics. She just likes it. Right. So she does it. And my other daughter's eight and she's decent at gymnastics, but not nearly as good as her sister. And we called around until we found the place that both of them could do gymnastics at the same hour. Right. I'm not even going to take my two kids to gymnastics on different hours. So twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, two o'clock in the afternoon, we drop them off. We drive two blocks up the road to a Mexican restaurant. We have a margarita. We eat a taco, have a little one hour date, quality time with the wife, go back and pick them up, go home. Yeah. That's what we do. Our kids matter, but we do too. Man, I don't get it. You know, people are running their kids around everywhere and uh, anyway, so there are just so many more demands on our time. It's, uh, yep. I don't know how we can continue. Yeah. I really don't. Well, that's enough about that. Makes me red faced and angry. You and I talk about this all the time. And for me, I have always, I feel like I work really hard at working very efficiently. I work very focused, undistracted, knock out a lot of work. And I still cannot seem to get my head above water on most days. You know, I'm like, the goal for me, I get up real early in the morning. The goal for me is to be done by around lunchtime. And I'm frustrated at the number of days that I'm still working at five and six o'clock at night when I started at 430 in the morning because there were just too many things. Now, you know, I'm, I'm running a couple of businesses that continue to grow really fast. And I know it won't always be that way. We're not always going to grow at the same rate we've grown in the last, the last two and a half years, but it's tough, man. And it robs us of those things that we find really valuable, like like those things that are ultimately important, but not urgent, we talk about, right? Things like spending good quality time with our family, things like reading good books. We don't have time to read good books anymore. That's a problem. It's just, you know, because we don't prioritize it. We fill our time with these other things. We don't have time to train. We don't have time to take care of our bodies. We don't have time to eat good food. And so we live on fast food, right? Fast food. This is bullshit. It's killing us. So. I'm so disgusted. We did an episode with Michael Burgos. And Burgos at that time had a job that was taking advantage yeah. of, I think, all the employees. Super nice guy. He was in the healthcare field, and these people were just expected to work more and more and more. He had worked seven days a week for months. Yep. Ask for a day off, and they would give him a bunch of shade about it. And not grant it, by the way. Yeah. Listen, if you're in that job, you got to leave. Yeah. By the way, he's left that job. And he did. For that very reason. You know, we don't live to train, we train to live, and we don't live to work either. We work so that we can live. That's right. So there's just time saving thing. You may need a different job. That's right. Yeah. Ugh. I'd agree. So that's some lifestyle stuff. That's some barbell stuff. That's some practical weightlifting stuff. Do you have any other practical training advice for maximizing efficiency? Well, you know, use the four big lifts and uh LP, you know, yeah. if you can use LP in the four main lifts, why would you do anything else? You know, if you're doing a bunch of stretching, if you're doing a bunch of prehab stuff, you know, you're just wasting time, you know, yeah. you need to respect yourself enough. Well, and by the way, there's things that we'll do sometimes that we know make us feel better. Not in the gym. Right? So like if I roll my, yes, <laughs> hold on. Yes, for me in the gym, but here's what I do. It doesn't take any of my time because like, if I dig around on my rear delts, on my kind of infraspinatus areas with a lacrosse ball, it feels pretty good. But you know when I do that? Right. In the 30 seconds between the sets that I'm just going to be catching my breath anyway, or on the squat, I have a hard time getting my grip on the bar where I need to because I'm, I have inflexible shoulders. And so what I do is I do the best I can on the very first set of empty bar. And that empty bar is often like a high bar because I can't get in a low bar position. It's on the hot dogs on the back of your neck. That's right. I rack the bar, I go grab the mini band, and I stretch out my shoulders and stretch out my shoulders and do the Paul Horn stretch under the bar. So you can look that up on YouTube. And I get under the bar again and do it again, and it's in a little lower position. And I throw 95 pounds on real quick because I'm old and I need to take smaller jumps. And maybe I'll stretch with the band one more time and I get under 95. But that whole process is like three minutes total. Right. Like the first three sets and some stretches, right? So if you're somebody just like, yeah, really, if you just feel better on a foam roller, Okay, that's fine. But there's no reason to do 15 minutes of foam rolling before you ever start your squats. That's crazy, right? And we know it doesn't actually benefit you. So the man who owns little is little owned. That's absolutely true. There you go.
We talked about this last episode, right? Like the borrower is the slave to the lender. And that's part of this problem too, from a time efficiency standpoint. If you're somebody that ties very cleanly with the financial episode, if you're somebody who has continued to overextend yourself so that you have to constantly work to keep your head above water, then just like you said, you're living to work. You're not working to live. That's not the way we want to be. So I'm too damn lazy for all of that. All right, there's another show. Hopefully it saves you some time. Hopefully it'll save you more time than it took you to listen to this. That's right. Get yourself a timer. Mm. that's probably the big practical step. $12 on Amazon or spend 300 bucks on Rogue. Yep. Get yourself a timer. Maybe get a home gym. If you do have the home gym, maybe spring for the uh, slightly larger rack uh, and a second barbell. We didn't say this, but you could potentially need more change plates if you're running two barbells at a time. You know, and just be disciplined and thoughtful about how you use the time there. You can do more than one lift at a time and uh, just gang up on that stuff and knock it out. You are worth it. Your time is too valuable. So get on it and uh, care about yourself. We'll talk to you guys in a few days. Thank you. Thank you.